Kalani, talk about getting ready for this week, last week, uh, <clears throat> and then what do you want to see happen over the next few days? I'll just finish off uh, strong in spring. I, th I think we've had some really good practices, and you've got some guys banged up, um, but I think we got everything we wanted so far, and it's just more of a uh, getting everything ready for the going, thinking about fall camp, uh, getting as much film as we can for our install for a lot of the new guys so they can see it on film, and then just uh, keep getting better at our fundamentals and technique. And so I, I felt like we've we've made some huge strides as far as getting our team deeper and, and uh, competing in a lot of different spots. And I think that, uh, you know, this going into today's practice, we had a really good one today. And I think we'll take a couple more to get ready for Friday, which is going to be more like another practice. Um, you know, we'll try to do some 11 on 11 stuff during the practice, but uh, I don't think we're going to, we're not going to do a spring game type of deal. Um, just trying to keep our guys healthy and, and uh, with our numbers being a little bit down, um, I think that's probably the right approach to take. I also wanted to ask about the Dan Plater passing away over the weekend. I know he's been around the program. I've seen him in the offices and around a lot. What is what has he meant to the program? And I know he's had some health issues and challenges that way, but uh, just talk about him and that loss. Yeah, I mean, obviously he was a great player um, back in the day, and. and you know, it, it, I've just been really uh, thankful that we have players that embrace uh, former players that have been through here and, and uh, respect them for, for all their sacrifice. And so uh, I think the connection that he had to our players was something that he really uh, relished. You know, and every day we'd see him. And, I mean, he had a, co a great connection to the administration, but also to the, uh, the coaching staff. And, uh, you know, he'll be missed. And, um, you know, we, we know that he's... Um, He's going to be always supportive of our program and, and our team, especially the wide receivers. So hopefully this will be a good year for the wideouts to show out for him. All right, let's go, Jay, and then Mitch. Lonnie, with a, a week left of spring camp, which position group would you say is the most settled as far as depth chart goes, and which group is maybe the least settled? I would say the most settled would probably be the linebacker the thing that comes to my mind right away. I feel like we have not just a good two deep, but a good three deep, and uh, we have a lot of you know really good players there. I mean, if you're looking at the the three, Peyton Wilgar and Max Tooley and Keenan Peely, those three I think have tons of um, experience under their belt, and they they've had a lot of game time um, plays and. A lot of different places too, a lot of different positions. So those guys can play all all our, our linebacker spots and our DN spots. So I think that that's probably the most settled. Then I really feel good about the two deep and three deep, even in that position. And, and then some of the guys that we're going to add to it that have been home from their missions and guys that are still coming home uh, this summer. So I think it's going to add to an already deep uh, position. Um, as far as I, I would say linebackers, and I also go to the the kickers. So. I think we're, we're really set at, at, at place kicking and, and punting. But uh, we also have some, some other guys that, that I think can, uh, you know, if they need to kick the ball or punt, we feel good about the, the backups there too So and snapping. So uh, as far as the ones not set yet, I feel good about the talent, but we're still figuring out the quarterback situation. So uh, that, that one's not going to be figured out by the end of this week. Uh, has that been whittled down at all? You mentioned last time you might whittle it down a little. I think it will be. I think I'll let um, the time. I mean, we still have th three more practices. You know, we finished the one today, and then we still have uh, three more, including the one on Friday. And so I think we'll, we'll see how it works with those three and, and uh, try to whittle it down. Because I think we're going to need to get more reps to the guys that can compete for it. And um, that'll, that'll happen probably at the end of this week. Kalani, which positions have, have you mentioned that some of the numbers are currently down? Which positions are maybe the, the lightest at the moment? Um, there's just a lot of guys that that are just getting banged up, and it's not anything too um, alarming. But we, you know, we lost um, uh, Michael Harper, you know, for the year, and, and it's unfortunate because he's a starter for us. But we have uh, seen other guys step up in that position. I mean, we have it's still a deep group. At corner, and then seeing new guys like um, like Dean come along, you know, and do some really good things there, and he's long, and so 
uh, and, and has tons of ability. And then you add in all the guys that have played there, have have experience. Um, you know, Keenan Ellis and and Shimon and uh, D'Lo and Isaiah. A lot of good players there. And then still developing some young guys and, and some even newcomers like Ethan Slade's done some really good things there too. So uh, I feel good about the DBs. I, I don't. Uh, what was the other part of the question, Mitch? Just, just, in other, just positions that are just light in terms of numbers heading into the spring practice yeah, on Friday. I, I don't know if, if I can say like they're all light, but we always have to look at O line, D line matchup when you're going into. That's why you, that's when you can do a game, and when you, if you can't, and so but I think we have a lot of guys that can play, but it's just a matter of do you put them at risk right now, but towards the end of it going into our off season, We need those guys to be healthy, and uh, we've had a lot of competition throughout spring already, you know, so I think the decision is that if we can have the linemen to do it and, and do a game, then we would, but right now um, looking at our O-line, D-line situation, we, we need probably, we'd like to have our two deep stay healthy, <laughs> and then uh, and then we just don't, we, we need some younger guys to still develop, and I don't know if, if uh, having a spring game would be, really be ideal for Friday. So that that's where you have to how's look at first. How's the competition gone at the, the, the left tackle spot to fill the void left by uh, Brady Christensen? How are guys like Blake Freeland, Harris Lachance? What, what's, who are the personnel that are maybe vying for that spot? Well, I mean, I think, I think Harris Lachance at right tackle and um, Blake Freeland at left tackle are doing a really good job right now and probably getting the most consistency out of those guys at, the, at those spots. And um, and then, you know, we have a bunch of guys that can kind of rotate in there. And, and um, you know, Barrington's always been – Clark Barrington's always been a, a mainstay at left guard and James Empey at center. And then right guard Connor Page done some really good things there too. And, and we just have a bunch of guys that are playing – so many different positions. I think uh, Funk's doing a good job at rotating those guys. And you're seeing guys like um, you know uh, Seth Willis step up, and uh, Braden Kimes is going to be a really good player here. You know, and, and and he's got a lot of height, a lot of size, and he's big now. So I think all that time and development is going to pay off for him. And um, you know, we're starting to see some other guys step up. But as soon as we get the rest of the guys healthy and ready to go, I, I think it'll, that'll be a lo- lot deeper room. Let's go, Norma, and then Jared. Hey, Coach, considering all the talent that you guys produced over the past couple years, particularly last year, and then the pandemic, the changes that it's forced on the NFL Combine, would you say that this would be the biggest uh, pro day in BYU history? Yeah, probably, because I I think, um, I mean, I, I think we've always made pro day really important to our our program and, and trying to do everything we can to to showcase our players' talents and and I think having these guys come out and be able to you know run and, and time and, and do all those things for the scouts is going to be huge. And then having uh, all the uh, attention around Zach is bringing a lot more eyes to to his program. But I, I think um, pro day has always been big for us and 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 I think since I've been the head coach, that's something that I want to really keep emphasizing is that we take care of the scouts when they come here and we give them as much information and film as they need and then um, that we make it a big priority for us to um, get our guys into the NFL and I think you know with some of the development things that we've been able to do in the past you're starting to see I, I remember last year saying that I think we have a lot of NFL guys on our roster I still believe that and uh, you know, some of them will have an opportunity to go and get drafted and do free agent contracts and make teams this season. And then the, the next guys will step up and we're still having guys develop. I, I really believe we have, uh, hopefully this will be the, the biggest pro day to date and then maybe we, we get it even bigger next year. Hopefully we just keep that thing rolling. You mentioned that uh, you constantly believe that your team is full of NFL players. Last year, the program didn't have any BYU player be selected in the draft. The previous seven years, you had had at least one. This year, you're projected to have possibly multiple. Do you think that this is something that the program can continue and continue to build off of, or is it just because you just happen to get the luck of the draw with these guys? No, we've been. It's it's been a priority from day one. If you look at the years past, when we've been trying to develop our program, I've said it before. I want to get guys in the NFL. That's a priority for me. 
And so I think the I think the league needs our guys, and I think uh, we have guys that can go out there and have success. So you know, um, even guys that have been injured and stuff like that, we we need to find a way to get them back on track and give them an opportunity to to show on the field and get an opportunity to, to make teams. And so I, I really believe that this is something that's been deliberate. We've been trying to focus on that from from the beginning. And uh, I'd like to. I, I wish Norma I could just predict it, but I'd like to keep. I, there's an effort here to, to have that happen, and and I, I think that uh, I think we'll be able to continue it. I, like I said, we have a lot of guys that will be able to join the NFL this year, and I, I believe we'll have some more next year. I said that um, I've been saying that for you know the last couple of years now that I think we have a good group of, of guys that can make make the, the NFL and, and make a difference there for their teams. All right, Derek, you've got the last question. Bonnie, Friday's got to be a day you're looking forward to then because you get all the attention with Pro Day, you get the spring practice, you get some fans in the stands, and after last year not even getting to the end of spring practice, what's it like to prepare for you know that type of a day, you know that type of energy here in March, long ways from the season, but to have that type of an opportunity? Yeah, and I think just having um... – seeing everyone back again you know they're they're all they've been coming in last week and even coming in this week seeing all the 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 seniors and even guys that didn't have an opportunity to do a pro day like um Aleva Hifo and Micah Simon um you know have those guys back to to run some routes and and and, uh do some things and do a workout I think some of them are going to run a 40 um Austin Lee and all those guys just give it another chance and and um I'm just thankful that we have a staff that that an administration that's uh, that has the same vision that that we do as a as a coaching staff to try to give our guys every opportunity to do pro day and to showcase their talents and so even if the timing is off a little bit some of those guys will have another opportunity and if it works out great if not then they can say that we did everything we can as a, as a uh, administration a school and a program to get them in that position to to do their best and get to the league now I, I think that. You know, I, I don't know how they'll do it, but I, I have a really good feeling that I think they'll surprise some people, and, and we'll, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of it. There's a lot of energy going into that weekend, um, into that day, and for, for me, it's just trying to get, trying to utilize that last practice to get the most out of our guys that we can, and I've seen a lot of players just made huge strides and getting better as, um, you know, it, overall, and, and I mean, there's a lot of guys that I, I see that's getting better. You're talking to, you're going to interview a couple of them. I think Chris Jackson's done some amazing things to, you know, catapult himself into. A, I think he's setting himself up for a really, really successful and fun 2021. And Josh Wilson's doing himself really good favors by competing and moving up the depth chart and earning some playing time. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I think just a lot of energy that's going around uh, around BYU and. More than anything, I just want to keep the program, keep building, keep developing this thing into, into the beast that I think it can it can be. Uh, thanks, coach. Can I clarify oh. one thing? Did you say Micah Harper is out for this coming season, or just for spring ball? No, he's out for spring ball, and then there's a chance that what the plan would be going into because he was a, a, a true freshman and started for us. The plan will be for him to uh, make a comeback, and then. We'll utilize, definitely utilize the four games that he will be able to redshirt with, and then we'll see how his progress um, gets from that from then on. So we know we're going to use the four games uh, towards the end of the year, but if he if he comes along as as well as we anticipate, then maybe there's just a chance that he'll just play right away. And I don't know how it works because he'll be a freshman all over again next year. So, but we do have the redshirt year as insurance just in case. Does that make you got that, Jay? Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay, no worries. All right, thanks, All right guys, thank you. Thanks,